And as a parent, if you're sending your children for such church events, do not put down your antennas because it's a church outreach. Be as alert as you would be if she was going out or he was going out with their friends somewhere. Now parents, please listen. Be very keen not to allow a situation where a minister of the gospel of the opposite gender is the one who's very close to your child. It could be a youth pastor, it could be a counselor, it could be a church team coach. Is the one picking them for practice, is the one dropping them, is the one cancelling them, is the one they're opening up to. As ministries, we should discourage it. As head pastors, we should always make sure that the male coaches, male counselors, male, male choir masters, whatever male leader is handling the men in the team and if there are issues with the ladies there's always a lady in leadership who they are referred to or even the pastor's wife just to avoid that situation from brewing because it does brew and it does bring seduction and abuse if you're going for mission trips with the church please have a plan a and have a plan b know beforehand where will you be sleeping you know the bible says that they went two by two and that's a practice that churches do if you're two let be two ladies if you're two guys be two Two guys but don't be paired up with a person of the opposite sex and if you're going as a group please plan ahead know exactly where you'll be sleeping who you'll be sleeping with what the quarters are like will the ladies be in their separate place and their men be in their separate place is it a place that uh, is secure and safe that someone cannot budge in people have gotten abused in such situations in the name of church outreaches always have a plan b the journey back how are you gonna come back uh people have gotten into abuse and seduction and sin because it became late and the only person available to drop them was a member of the opposite gender and they had to go with this person and either they were abused or seduced into sexual sin so always have a plan b don't be a sitting duck don't be so naive assuming someone else is taking a hundred percent care of your welfare and as a parent if you're sending your children for such church events please scrutinize it and discuss with this with them have contingency plans if they find themselves in a situation where they're stranded if they find themselves in a situation where they're put in a compromising place let your children always know this is a plan b if anything happens call me if need be i will come for you or who is someone who's nearby who can go and get them do not put down your antennas because it's a church outreach and it's a church event be as alert as you would be if she was going out or he was going out with their friends somewhere avoid situations where you're going to serve in the house of the man of god um I know this happens a lot in many churches and ministries but when you're going alone and you keep finding yourself in situations where you're alone with a man or woman of God of the opposite gender please identify what is inappropriate talk inappropriate talk is anything that's personal anything that concerns your beauty your body anything that tries to get into your heart please recognize what is inappropriate touch teach your children teach your young people who are so fiery and they feel so special when they've been chosen to go and serve in the house of the man of god to go and arrange flowers to go and take care of the baby what is inappropriate touch what is inappropriate talk and please train your children that no man and woman of god is above the law and is above the law of christ that if anything should happen and they find themselves in a situation where they are being raped and abused they have every right to scream their head off they have every right to run joseph ran when Potiphar's wife tried to catch him into sexual sin let them not be scared that i cannot shout because this is a man of god or i cannot shout because this is a woman of god or i cannot shout because i lose the anointing or come out of the covering or i'll be excommunicated scream shout run look crazy rather people think you're crazy but you save your sexuality and your integrity rather you come out of that church and listen you cannot lose anointing you cannot lose the covering of god because you refuse to comply with a minister of the gospel who's trying to seduce you or to abuse you that is manipulation and it's a lie from hell to get you scared so that you become docile and just accept and receive what's being done to you. I remember my husband and I were once invited to Nigeria by a minister of the gospel and he was ready to pay everything and to take us to his ministry so that we could minister there. And I remember what bothered us was 
that we found out this man of God when he comes into the country, he's married and seems to be in a happy, good marriage. He's a sound man and a good teacher of the gospel. There was no reason to be suspicious about his morality or anything. But whenever he would be in the country, he would be hosted by single women. So he would be staying alone with a single woman in a house. Number one, it's unwise because each of them is downplaying the fact that they are human and they can find themselves in a situation. It's conducive. It gives the enemy a foothold for them to get into seduction, sexual sin, or even uh, abuse. And um, number two, it gives the appearance of evil, which Christ said that matters. Do not give the appearance of evil. You should not be a married man in the house of a single woman alone. I don't care how anointed you are. It would have been better for him to have traveled maybe with a couple or be hosted by a married couple, a family or be hosted by a male minister and that's the only reason we never went to Nigeria because we thought if you can do this when you come here how is our accommodation going to be when we come over and let me tell you we never went we said let's lose the opportunity to travel let's the, lose the opportunity to grow in grace whatever people call it let nothing be so big and so important that you're willing to compromise your body and your sexuality for it it's never worth it it grieves God and it grieves the Holy Spirit and it compromises you